Hello. Today is a very exciting day for bookish nerds like me. The Chicago Manual of Style 18th edition has been released. If you don't know me, my name is Molly. I'm a professional freelance book editor and book blogger and I could not be more excited. So I figured today we would annotate the new 18th edition together. As you can see, my 17th edition has been very loved um, and I have a lot of tabs and highlighting and notes throughout. I am waiting for my tabs to get here in the mail so I won't be able to do that today, but I figure I could transfer some of the notes over. Also, if you're um, an editor and you're interested in knowing what's different about the 18th edition, I do have a blog post all about it so you can nerd out with me at mollyreads.com. I'll have it linked down below. I've got all my book annotating goodies here. This just makes 14 year old Molly so happy to have all of these different pastel colored highlighters. And we're just gonna have a little girlish moment while we chat. Oh my gosh, she's such a chunker. Look how thick, look how thick she is. So I've been thinking a lot about consistency lately, which is kind of funny given what I'm doing at this moment because the Chicago Manual of Style is all about um, consistency, right? Because a style sheet, if you're an editor or you're interested in editing, you know that a style sheet is basically where you take stock of all of the things in a project, all of the different stylistic preferences, whether that's like grammar, usage, punctuation, syntax, you take stock of those things and you leave a note in a document um, so that you can make sure that all those stylistic preferences are consistent throughout the book project. And I feel like as an editor, I know how to do that. Consistency is my jam, it's my priority. But in my life, consistency is a lot harder, especially being, you know, a mom to two little kids. I can't easily edit my life. I can't add or delete to remain consistent. For me, being consistent means showing up for the habits that I'm trying to create, trying to create systems so that the goals that I have, it's more about, you know, continuous improvement, um, which for me is tricky because I am a recovering perfectionist and perfectionism is kind of the enemy of consistency if you think about it because it's so easy to get in that all or nothing mindset when you're trying to be perfect. Oh my gosh, I love the way it smells. I literally, when I got this in the mail, I showed my four-year-old and I was like, smell it. It smells so good. And I feel like I'm just like creating a little book nerd. She's a little book nerd in the making. It is really hard to multitask. Okay, let's see parts of the book. So I've really been trying to focus on consistency in the sense of like, I'm trying to show up. And even if it's not perfect or I fail, I want to be able to get back on track easily. And so for me, that means you know, if I want to make exercise a habit, for instance, um, and I have very ambitious and lofty goals of going three times a week or four times a week for this, you know, set of time, like an hour or something, if I only have 30 minutes or something comes up and my kids are sick, you know, because there's a lot of like unforeseen circumstances when you have little children. For me, it's about just sticking to the habit. So maybe I do 10 squats when I have to fully miss a gym day. I'm still devoted to the habit of exercising. So I'm gonna do 10 squats, even though it's not you know, my full workout routine. Or maybe um, instead of, you know, maybe I set out to write and publish a blog post in a day and I'm only able to get a paragraph in. That's still a paragraph. That's still, I'm still like devoted to the habit of sitting down and writing. Or maybe I can't write a full blog post, but I can outline a blog post. Or maybe I can, you know, do some keyword research or some content planning that's going to support that blog post. The idea is just sticking to your habits, even if it's not the full perfect thing you set out to do. For me, this has to do with what James Clear talks about in Atomic Habits, which is just that continuous improvement, that 1% better every day. Um, if I have that all or nothing mentality, I might give up and not see the benefit, you know, five, 10 years down the line. I also think consistency has to do with 
you know, setting up an environment where you can succeed and you can continue doing what you're doing. So for me, it's all about the environment. I want to make sure that my computer, my desk area is cleaned up and my char- my computer's fully charged and, you know, my environment is ready for work so that when I wake up at six in the morning and I grab my cup of coffee, which is also prepped the night before, like I'm creating this environment of success um, where it's just a little bit easier to stick to the habits that I'm trying to build. Or, you know, we're trying to do this thing called morning basket with our girls. And it's basically a time that we've devoted as a family to sit down. Um, usually it's just me and the girls because Aaron's at work, but um, it's a time where we sit down and we learn about Jesus and we read our Bible together and we talk about God and we pray. And, you know, if I wanted it to go perfectly, um, we would never do it because I have a two and a four year old. And so for me, it's more about creating an environment that is fun and memorable and enjoyable and it unites us as a family. And of course the content is important, but in five, 10, 20 years, my girls are not going to remember what we talked about today in morning basket time. They're going to remember the habit that we formed as a family, the family rhythm that we're forming, the consistency of meeting together. Okay, I'm way too chatty and it's so hard for me to actually multitask here. I've got to bookmark this hyphenation guide because I pretty much always look this up when I'm editing. Another note out there for people who maybe don't understand what editors do, um, I think the mark of a really good editor is someone who can listen to their gut, but also look up the rules. I have been accused of sleeping with the Chicago Manual of Style under my pillow by a client, which was like my favorite thing to ever hear <laughs> from a client. Um, I don't actually know this thing like the back of my hand. Um, I just know where to look things up. I feel like a good editor is someone who researches, who looks up every single thing unless they're 100% sure what the answer is. Um, because, you know, it's more than just being a gut check editor. You need to actually be diligent in looking things up, be consistent in looking things up. So I don't know. I This is just kind of something that I have been thinking a lot about with consistency and what areas of my life I really want to be consistent in and for me right now you know I'm kind of forced to work with the pockets of time that I do have and it's really good for me it's forcing me out of my habit of trying to be perfect all the time and trying to like have these high expectations or these over ambitious goals with my time um, and just be consistent in the small things one thing that I do want to work on with consistency is annotating my books that I'm reading. So for me, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I do a lot of reading on my Kindle, but I do often have a physical copy of the book. And so I'm starting to bookmark my audiobooks um, and, you know, fold pages while I'm reading if I can't fully annotate in the moment. And I'm trying to set aside time um, to just annotate a page, you know? I feel like in the past I haven't annotated books, even though I've really wanted to because I didn't feel like I had the time to sit down and just annotate a full book, but who has the time for that? You know, it's about reading a page or it's about annotating a page at a time. You don't have to be, I guess I don't have to be so rigid with these things. Another thing that James Clear talks about in his book, Atomic Habits, is this idea of an identity shift So I think the example he uses was if you have two people who are trying to quit smoking and you have one and they both are offered a cigarette and one of them says, no thanks, I'm trying to quit smoking and the other one says, no thanks, I'm not a smoker. Obviously, one of those people is going to probably succeed more than the other um, because it's an identity shift. And I think about the identities that I have, you know, as a reader, um, for, for example, I'm trying to not really obsess over like how many books I'm reading or how many pages I read in a given day or something like that. It's more about the habit of reading for me, for slowing down, setting aside the time, even if it's a page a day, I want to be in my books 
more often. So like I said, I have some book tabs coming in the mail tonight or tomorrow. And once I get them in, I will put them in my book and show you the finished product. But for now, I have to go work on my um, proofreading project. I have about 12 to 20 pages that I need to proof today. Um, so I should be able to do that while the girls are at preschool and maybe work on a blog post if I have time. ignore the mess in here <laughs> and the disorganized um, cabinet space but we if you saw my last vlog you know that we're painting our kitchen cabinets they used to be a dark brown and I actually don't love this granite countertop it's like a brown black white granite um, so we really had a hard time with what color to pick but we decided to go with this green it's called coastal plain um, and this is just the first coat, but I feel like I really like it. It's the next day. I am actually working downstairs today because there's no internet upstairs. It's just not working where my desk is, which is really throwing me off today, but that's okay. We've got some proofreading done. I am now working on a blog post. Um, that's really exciting. I'm. It's probably my most researched blog post of the year, and that's my most anticipated books of 2025. That's right, I'm already thinking about next year's books. Someone was meowing at the front door. Guys, remember Remus? Remember when I got him when he was just a little kitten? Okay, bye. So my most anticipated books of 2025 is gonna come out probably next month, but I'm going through all the publisher catalogs right now. I'm doing all my research, mainly from like January to March right now, but I definitely have some that are coming out in the summer of next year. Um, not a ton of fall and winter yet for next year, just cause you know, it's a little wild way. I'll give you a sneak peek though. One of my most anticipated books of next year is gonna be Emily Henry's next book, of course, and it is called Great Big Beautiful Life. I also have, and I have my list right here, so I'll just read from that. Blackwood's Blue Sky by Ewan Ivy. I think that's how you say her name. She wrote um, The Snow Child, and I absolutely loved that book. She lives in Alaska, so she has the most amazing atmospheric books if you like a good adventure story set in Alaska. Good Dirt by Charmaine Wilkerson. Um, she wrote Black Cake. She has another book coming out. Patty Callahan Henry has another book coming out. Um, and I was obsessed with her latest book. This book is called The Story She Left Behind. Um, and there's a few others, like Adrienne Young has a book coming out. We'll get to the list. It's gonna be a lot of books, I think, because next year there's just a lot of good books coming out. What can I say? I can't narrow it down too much. Also, I wanted to say on the topic of consistency, this book, if you're a Christian, it's called Habits of the Household, Practicing the Story of God in Everyday Family Rhythms. This book is slowly changing my life. Um, it is basically, um, has a, it basically has a lot to do with everything we've talked about with atomic habits um, and consistency and finding meaning in the chaos of raising children and all of the transitional moments in your day, how you can kind of habit stack and how you can bring um, bring Jesus into those mundane moments and um, create 
little liturgies in your everyday routine. If this doesn't speak to you, that's totally fine, but I wanted to mention it for my fellow Christian parents out there. Aaron and I are reading it together every Thursday evening. We're just spending one hour a week. I mean, that's how slowly we're going through it, but it's a way that we can really commit to reading a chapter, however many pages we can read and talking about it, setting the time to talk about our family rhythms and build habits that are intentional and consistent. You are like gold dust over me Just like an angel said Good morning. It's Friday morning and I am getting ready. Got a late start to my morning because the girls don't have school today. We have some flooding in our area. So <laughs> we're going to have to pivot. We're going to have to pivot today. This is exactly what I mean about unforeseen, you know, circumstances when you have kids. There's just only so much you can plan for. Fridays are usually my house management days. <laughs> when the girls are at preschool, I try, if I don't have a ton of work, I try to get a lot of the house stuff done. I do a lot of grocery planning on Fridays, meal planning. I fold a ton of laundry on Fridays. I kind of just pick up the house um, and we had some friends over last night, so our house is totally trashed. So with the girls being home, um, I'm trying to kind of get creative with what we're doing. We have, you know, a two and a four year old, so they're just now getting to the point where they can play together for a little bit of time without much interaction from me. But I just put on a Mickey Mouse movie so that I could get ready and clean up the kitchen because we made pumpkin waffles this morning and the kitchen is a mess. Today I have my typical proofreading that I need to get done. Um, I have house projects or house <clears throat> admin stuff and I don't think I'm gonna get a lot done beyond that. I have um, some invoices to send and some emails to follow up on, but I don't really foresee any kind of blog work happening today, which is fine because it's not really, it wasn't really on my list. But I was supposed to work out this morning um, and with the flooding in our area, it's just not gonna be happening outside of the home. So I think what I'm gonna do is planned to work out during Harriet's nap. So I've been reading Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, I think is how you say her last name. Um, and I have had so many people in my life beg me to read this book. Um, and I'm finally getting to it and loving it. It's giving me Emily Henry, so far less spicy than Emily Henry. Um, but I am just loving it so much. The characters, the romance, the setting, everything is perfection. The witty banter and cute, just adorable dialogue and chemistry on the page is so cute. So I think I will try to pick a new audiobook today um, to start up while I'm not able to like physically read. Um, so that I can have something going in my ears um, while I'm cleaning. This morning when I woke up, um, I saw an article in search engine land, which is, I don't know, if you're into the SEO blogging world, you probably know about it. Um, but I saw an, an article today about how Google is recognizing content creators because if you don't know, it's been a very volatile landscape lately for content creators out there. Any kind of blogger who's trying to get organic traffic through Google, it's just been, it's been rough out there. 
Um, but today was the first day I had a little bit of hope. Now I never want to be someone who's like chasing the algorithms, but a lot of my blog traffic does come through organic search. Um, and with all of the core Google updates happening lately, like it's just been a little bit scary to rely on Google. And that's why I'm trying to diversify my traffic um, through like Pinterest and social, hopefully YouTube. Um, but it's been a little bit nerve wracking. And then today, um, I read this article and it was all about how Google is actually trying to recognize content creators and how like when you search a term in Google, how you might, there might be like author bios under or above the AI snippet. I forget what it's called, but you know, because AI is sort of taking over Google search, it leaves a lot of content creators you know, in the, in the dust because I don't know, I am not anti AI, but I'm not, I'm also very doom and gloom about it. <laughs> um, especially from a content standpoint and as an editor, the copyright issues really, really bother me. Um, but it looks like Google's trying maybe, I don't know. I feel like I'm being really hopeful, but looks like Google's at least trying to recognize the creators that it's stealing from with the AI little snippets there. But yeah, I am not an AI, you know, expert by any means. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. But if you're interested in that kind of nerdy stuff, let me know in the comments. I'd love to chat with you about AI and the future of AI and the future of creative jobs because makes me nervous. All right, in case you're wondering, this is what I'm gonna be cleaning up today. This is how it is all over my house. So because of the chaos of today, I think this is where I'm gonna leave you. Thank you so much for watching and being here while I talk about habits and annotating books and consistency. If you are also trying to create new habits and new systems and new family rhythms, I would love to know what's working for you. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, um, make sure to check the description down below for all the links that I mentioned throughout this vlog. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time, friends.